Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopsschool.com. All these actually companies will create the switches and the routers, which you required for, uh, you know, for your networks. Now there are companies like uh, Linksys. Now Linksys is nothing but a part of Cisco now. It is a Cisco device, a Cisco company. But this company can also create Cisco uh, devices for your small offices, or your home routers, correct? Up to your enterprise devices. But there are companies like Cisco, Nortel, Juniper, 3Com. This company only do enterprise Correct. Enterprise routers, enterprise switches. This is different, different type of devices which we are going to see in our enterprise network. However, our focus point is what we need to understand how Cisco can. Correct. What are the different devices which Cisco can provide? You? Correct. Now, in terms of switches. In terms of switches, if I talk about switch, and if I talk about uh, Cisco devices, now based on your requirement, okay, Cisco do have two type of switches. Either you will go for layer two switch, okay, or either he will go for multi-layer or layer three switch. Now, based on how many ports you require, okay, minimum there is a 24 port switch. Minimum, I said this is a minimum size of 24 ports. But if I keep increasing, it will keep increasing that particular port. 128 port is also available. It will go up to the requirement of you. If you look at these switches, which we can see how many ports they have actually. You can simply type Cisco switch. Okay, it will ultimately say 24 port. Now these are your Cisco switches. This is how it looks like. Where I get where I can connect my computers together over here. Correct. This is another type of implementation, but you can see how many ports are there. Okay, now these both the boxes which is there, these are patch panels. I told you that while discussing our first part of the networking, I cannot directly connect my devices to the switch. I would connect the device to the patch panel and from patch panel to the switch. Correct. So there is a device called as patch panel as well. So you can look at it, how these devices are. These all are Cisco switches. Number of ports which you required, correct? And whatever numbers which we have required. So this is what we can get it. If you look at layer three switch also, it looks like the same. There's no difference. These are layer three switches. Correct where you can connect your computers together to create your local area connection. Correct. So this is switches. Now if I talk about L2 switch and L3 switch from Cisco, they majorly focused on a very simple. This is a very simple device. It only required how many ports you required on that particular switch 
or whether that switch should work on layer two only or it should also work on layer three now layer three is my network layer that means i am looking for a switch which can act like a router or i am looking for a switch that can act only like a switch i do not want any routing facility correct so cisco manufacture majorly these two type of switches correct based on your requirement they can manufacture there are multiple different models are available so you need to know how we can configure these switches correct in layer 3 also minimum you will be getting uh, 24 ports Get ports and so on. Now there are two categories under the switches actually. Now whatever switches which we are seeing from Cisco layer two switches and layer three switches, we can also call these switches as a manageable switch. Okay, manageable switch means these switch which I am purchasing from Cisco. This small box, which we have seen in the pictures, these small boxes, I can manage this device with the help of command line. I told you that Cisco devices, we are using CLI mode. This all switches which we are using, I can manage each and every single thing. These are very smart switches, correct? These devices can be managed with the help of command line. With the help of GUI. If I'm if I'm working on such kind of devices, then it could be considered as manageable switch. Correct? There is one more category called as unmanageable switch, which does not allow you to do any activity through command line. These are just a switch. If you look at it, there is no difference you can see unmanaged switch okay i can see by looking at it it's the same thing there is no technical difference at all the major technical difference would be i won't be able to manage this device with the help of command line because this device does not contain its own operating system which i can manage it does have the operating system which is fixed you cannot do any modification into that behavior whatever pre-configured things are there my switch can work like that i do not need to do anything the manufacturer of this particular switch would take care of it it is a fixed behavior you do not have any ability to access your switch operating system we can call it as cisco ios ios stand for internet working operating system now such operating system is not available in unmanaged switches it is only available in managed switches or manageable switch so remember that if I look at the switch, manageable and unmanageable, by looking at it physically, they look like same. Because every switch do have 24 ports, 48 ports, but it's very important to find out whether the switch which we are using, is it manageable or unmanageable? Manageable means I told you, I would be able to get the control of the switch I can do any customization with the help of command line because every Cisco device, whether it's a switch or whether it's a router, every Cisco device do have its own operating system called as Cisco IOS. I would be able to access that operating system with the help of command line, correct? Which we have seen that our network operating system was our component. Now that is nothing but our Cisco IOS in here, correct? So if I have a manageable switch, that means I would be able to handle that device with command line, correct? 
and it does contain Cisco IOS, Internet Working Operating System. Unmanageable switch, I won't have any control on it. Whatever default behavior of the switch, you can do that particular job. I won't be able to modify anything with, with the help of command. It does have the operating system, but I don't have any control on it. That is a default behavior, correct? It is only his own logic is made, but I do not able to modify it. That is called as unmanageable switches. Cisco also provide unmanageable switches, but nowadays that is not available. Linksys is the company correct who is actually manufactured lot of unmanageable switches now unmanageable switches are very very uh, cheaper you can see what is the cost of it 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 is somewhere some thousands of rupees actually 2000 3000 5000 correct 12000 rupees this is an unmanageable gigabyte switch correct this is very very cheaper if you if you compare it with manageable switches if you go to the manageable switch that is bit expensive correct it is not uh, something which is cheaper like this so linksys is a company who is actually dealing with unmanageable switches for cisco cisco primarily focus on manageable switch which is called as layer one and sorry layer two and layer three Correct. Now, this is what we can talk about switches. We will see how to access it. What are the different command line modes available? We will see that. But first, let's understand what are the type of devices which are available. Correct. And what are the different device hierarchy which is available in your organizations? OK, now this is about uh, our Cisco switches correct now if you come to router now cisco do have different strategies for router manufacturing now in router category cisco do have three type of router categories okay now here in cisco we have manageable and unmanageable under manageable we have layer two layer three now based on number of ports cisco can manufacture no doubt about it but in router there is a different strategy which cisco is managing okay now in case of router there are three different type of routers are available now the categories are available the first category called as access layer Now, access layer routers are very, very, uh, uh, you can say, low end routers. You can say that. Okay. The processing power is very low. Okay. Processing power is very low. And it is very cheaper, it means cost is manageable for that. So access level router would be very, very basic routers which Cisco is manufacturing. If you go to the router series 8000, 1000, sorry, 1000, 1600, 1700, correct? All these type of routers come under the category called as access layer router. I show you okay now this is called as router now what is the function of the router to connect two different networks together and to find the best possible path for my request or whatever I want to say send a packet from one network to another network this is the device who can help me to find out the best path and this is the device who can help me to make sure that 
two networks can communicate with each other two different networks so this is one eight series router we will see 1000 series now 1000 series router now this is how it looks like now this is additional add-on actually hey viewers our master in devops engineering program can help you to hone the skills necessary to succeed in high level devops positions so what are you waiting for enroll now and earn certification that show you are keeping pace with today's technical roles and requirements contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now yeah, i will talk about that as well you can go for 1600 series so these are all a router Okay, this is all different type of routers are there. Correct. This is low end router. We can call this access layer router, where capacity is very low. Correct. Where you require to have the cost is very low. Correct. So where you can use this access layer router. The second category of the router is called as distribution layer router. Now, distribution layer router is little bit what you can say more expensive than access layer router. It does have some more power. Okay, it does have more power. You can say this is intermediate router, intermediate level router. You can say medium, medium series of the router. The cost is little bit higher than the access layer router correct however it does not have a very high capacity but this is you can say better router option which we can have it this will go to the series called as as per my knowledge distribution router is 2800 if you can go for 3800 series 3700 series all these router would be considered as distribution layer router which is having some more power than access layer routers so if i see cisco 2800 series okay this is called as distribution layer router correct distribution layer routers which we can see Seven zero zero series. Okay, this is a three seven zero zero series. So it is bit uh, a very good device which we can see, and it is having some very good option over there. It's a very very uh, powerful device. Then your access layer. The third category of the router which switch sorry third category of the router which uh, manufactured by cisco would be called as core now this is very very powerful this is called as you can say this is high end router this is literally very high end router very very expensive correct very very expensive router very high processing power very fast majorly used in internet service providers network and if you have your headquarters or your main offices where all the traffics are generated and if i would like to control all that particular traffic then i'm using the concept called as co route here I do have a series called as 6400-7000 series, 7000 series router. You can see 9000 series router, 7200 series router, then 12000 series router in XR. These all are core routers. 
I already shown you how it looks like 12,000 XR series. But these are called as core level of the router. These are very, very powerful. Now, some of the router actually, you uh, some model numbers are there, correct? Which you required to ask Cisco to manufacture for you. Okay, in some in this series also. Now this is 7200 series route. Go to this router 12,000 XR. Okay, now look at this router. Correct. This is very, very big chassis are there. Now, who can use this router? This router used for internet service providers majorly because they want to transfer and they want to do a lot of activity at the same time. Correct? So majorly they use such kind of router, but still it's a very, very router. Now, if I would like to order such router to Cisco, actually, they need to provide me special chassis these routers are not pre-manufactured by cisco cisco said if you want to say this router put an order first we will manufacture this router and deliver it to you because these routers are very very expensive routers by looking at it it's like a big server it's a big tower correct but this is just a single router correct now this is what are the different type of series of the routers which we can see now switches are pretty straightforward either it's a manageable or unmanageable and based on what is the layer 2 layer 3 and based on how many ports you require but in case of router cisco is manufacturing three different categories access layer distribution layer and core router correct so this is you need to understand now this is a basic thing you should understand what cisco can do what's what type of Cisco devices are there who are other manufacturers who can also do this particular thing correct now let's understand which router you can use where correct where to use this particular router and what is the placement of it now let's understand it's very simple thing let's say i do have my headquarter is available let's say i do have a router which i can place it in my headquarter now i do have my offices located in some cities for example i do have an office in chennai office in bangalore correct office in hyderabad correct now these are major cities now under this cities also i do have multiple branch in single cities correct i do have 10 or uh, 5 branches in chennai correct these are 5 branches I do have some more branches in Bangalore. I do have some branches in Hyderabad. Now look at this hierarchical model. And you can see all these routers are actually connected to the internet. okay all these branches which is you can say city wise branches are connected to your headquarter and whatever city wise small small branches are connected they are connected to their main branches office in city so these connection between these offices we required van connection what we required you required wide area connection to be connected remember that now this is look like this is a hierarchical model 
about that. Okay, this is how, if, let's say this is one of the type of diagram which we can think of, correct? Now this is my small offices in cities. This is a main yeah. office in a city and I do have a headquarter, correct? Now I told you if I would like to connect these two routers, okay, if I consider these circles are nothing but a router. Now these routers are connected with each other with the help of van that means you should have internet connectivity available now you can imagine if i would like to connect this office this branch office to multiple all this branch office what should i do you can imagine if for example there is a hyderabad there is a small branch over here he want to contact with other branches means other branches means from Chennai and Bangalore. How many WAN connections which are required over here? Correct? Is it technically possible? No, I cannot purchase so many WAN connection for every office. Then what is the solution for this? It's very simple. All the small offices within that particular city, if they want to communicate with each other, they should go to this router and they should route the traffic from their city branch head means whatever head within that particular city you can contact with that router that router help you to communicate with your within city now if i would like to contact from chennai to hyderabad then i should go to the headquarter and headquarter router will help me to connect with my Hyderabad office. I don't need require to purchase any WAN connection for that. I don't require. That. Correct. Now you can imagine. Now understand how we can place our routers in this scenario. You can see this is very, very small offices within that particular city. Correct. So I can configure access layer, access layer routers over here where my capacity is very, very minimum. Correct. However, this router, which is within the, you can say branch office, which is a head branch office for that city only. Okay. I could configure some better choice because I need to route the traffic within that particular city, whatever branches are available, I need to route the traffic between this. So I should go for here, distribution layer router, where is little bit higher capacity, correct? And after that, this is my headquarter. Now, if I would like to move the traffic from Bangalore to Chennai, Chennai, to Hyderabad okay if I would like to do that that means here I required much more powerful router where I am getting tremendous amount of request if there is a huge traffic so here I can choose the router to use could be a core router correct so understand the placement of the router it's completely depend upon what your router is actually doing it correct whether your router required very less capacity that's fine you can use the access layer router your router said no it's handling some group of traffic so processing is required as a moderate level or intermediate level then obviously you need to choose a distribution layer router or if you say no i'm getting a huge traffic per second I need to process that particular traffic a very tremendous faster way then you should go for a core series router correct now it's completely depend upon how you want to use it technically speaking uh, you can choose the best router based on your requirement and based on your price factor because these routers are very very expensive correct okay so this is what we can talk it about how 
Cisco can manufacture the routers. What are the process? What are the different type of categories which we can see in the router? Now there is one more interesting thing is available in router typically not in Cisco switches, but in router there are two classifications one more time. OK, now this classification is there, but there is one more classification in the router. Correct. We can call it as router classification. Okay. Now there are two type of routers which you can use it. One is called as fixed router. And second one is called as modular router. Hey viewers. Trying to get into DevSecOps and all for our DevSecOps certified professional programs and earn the certification that shows you are fit for these technical roles and requirements. Contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box. Book your seats for the upcoming batches now. Now fixed router, it's non-upgradable. Okay, fixed router means everything is fixed. I cannot remove any particular card or you can say if if I for example fixed router or something L let's let's talk about your computer to be a, a very precise in your on your computer whenever you purchase any desktop we normally say is our network interface card is on board your sound card is on board means your motherboard do contain everything now which is built in inside that particular motherboard. Correct. So will it be possible to upgrade your sound card on the motherboard? No, it is a fixed sound card. I cannot change that sound card, which is already there on the top of motherboard. I cannot do that. Correct. That means fixed means which is already built in on the motherboard. Which you cannot easily upgrade that particular thing which is fixed for example if my fixed router contain only two lan cards which is available backside we will see what are the external ports which we can see correct but fixed router means everything is on board whatever motherboard which you are getting from the router manufacturer like a cisco everything would be fixed Correct. You need to understand if, if it is everything is fixed, it is not upgradable at all. But on other hand, we do have modular router. Modular means in terms of external cards, for example, whatever we are using. We are using external network adapter. I can take it out. I can upgrade it. It's like pluggable devices, correct? So some routers which are fixed, that means it is not upgradable because that particular devices, it's already on board. You cannot upgrade it so much easily. On other hand, I do have modular router. That means everything is pluggable device. If I want to upgrade anything, unplug that card put another card correct so it is like plug and play in case of modular router and in case of fixed router everything is on board correct so understand this is very very important option for you now this is a classification now there are only few routers which are fixed actually for example, 2500 series and 800 series are fixed, which is a very, very access layer uh, routers are there. Rest of them are modular router. Means I can upgrade that router at any given point of time. I will show you how the modular router looks like. It's, it's a very plug and play devices actually. Okay, you can say modular Cisco router means
modular Cisco. Now these are modular. If you look at this back, okay, if you carefully look at this back port, you can see I have this physical port. This is not fixed. I can remove this screw. I can take it out and I can put another one. Correct? Because this is modular. You can see here I have some more space available over here. What I can do with this? Okay, this I can unscrew it. I will put some more card into it. So this is completely pluggable. Devices are available. Correct. So understand modular devices means any given point of time. You can see over here now this is fixed. I can remove this. I can put the card inside. I can remove this. I can put the card inside. So these are upgradable. Currently, I do have only four network card on my router. If I come to know that I want four more to be connected, what I know, what should I do? I should purchase a module from Cisco. Cisco said, please go to the back of your router, turn off your router, unscrew this particular box. Whatever module which which is came from Cisco, they said push that module inside that. It's like our network interface card, external card which we are using, same like that. This is called as modular. Every device right now which Cisco is manufacturing, it is a modular device. There are few devices which is fixed, which cannot be upgradable. There is no facility that you can put any external network card for your router at all. Correct. So it's completely fixed router everything is available on the board everything you which you cannot upgrade it correct so remember that it is something which you can always use in this particular fashion correct so this is called as fixed and modular so whatever router even the switches Switches also have the modular option, but normally switches is nothing but an external ports. Actually, there is nothing which we can add externally. However, there is a very high end switches are available where you can increase the port as well. Ethernet port with the help of external modules if you want. Okay, but that is a layer three uh, switches actually where you have a facility of routing and switching together correct now let's understand what are the external ports are available on cisco router and switches What are the external ports are available now in terms of switch? There are two type of ports are available. Correct. If you can go to the switch. You can say external port on Cisco switch. Okay. If you could see, okay, now this is a flashcard. Uh, don't worry about that. I will tell you what are this type of flashcards are. Okay, now these are the power for CPU complex, 8 version CPU. These are the type of switches which we are having now what type of ports which is available on the switch this is something a ethernet type of switch where i can connect all the things over here there is a flash card now flash is nothing but a memory card where you can put your actually your cisco operating system correct now here POE devices. Now, if I say POE, that means power over Ethernet. I told you that it is also compatible for that. Correct. And here some uplink port are there. 
uplink port means from any other switch if i would like to connect this particular switch i should take the wire from this uplink to another particular switch correct so remember that majority in switches we want to focus on this particular part correct if you look at this particular switches so why and why it is good you can see here also there are different different type of ports are available which i can use it to connect my computer and i do have some uplink port where i can connect my any other switches to this particular port correct so these are the generic external ports are available correct other than this there are one more type category of the ports are available on the switches also the first port which is available it is called as console port okay and there might be the port is available called as auxiliary port we will see that because this is the same port is available on cisco router as well okay so cisco router also have console port and auxiliary port correct and on the switches i do have uplink port okay uplink ports majorly use if i would like to connect two switches together i prefer to go for uplink to uplink if i would like to go for it sometime uplink port can be used for higher devices as well correct if i would like to connect from switch to router is uh, preferably i i would use for uplink ports over there correct so uplink port majorly used in order to connect some higher devices as well correct so if i see my switches if i look at the back panel of the switches i will see the console port auxiliary port uplink ports and all 24 ports where i can connect my computers these are the external ports which we have and all the ports are ethernet everything is a ethernet technology 802.3 this is a standard correct we have configured the ethernet standard so everything would be configured over here correct that's fine now let's understand external ports on router Now, if I look at the back panel of the router, okay, there are many ports, but we are interested in this. This is much more clear. Currently, we don't have any particular router. Now, once again, here also I can have the cable for console port over here. You can see this particular port now why it is not coming properly but do we have any other picture any clear picture is there okay you can see these two ports are the console port okay which you can connect to your switches okay hey viewers are you looking for formal training on sre practices take our sre program this course will teach you how to successfully implement site reliability engineering in the modern day 24 into 7 services kick start your sre training today contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box Book your seats for the upcoming batches now. Wait, this is a console. What is written over here?
let me find out the best diagram where i can tell you is it a plain picture let's wait, wait. This is a very good picture, but it's why it's not coming. Hmm. This is very good. Okay. Now you can see this is clear also. Okay. Now understand. I told you that whenever you have any Cisco devices, there are two common ports are available correct majorly console port auxiliary port correct it is available on the switches also and if you look at this particular diagram you can see the console port and auxiliary port is also available in your particular router as well correct now console port and auxiliary port you can say these two type of ports could be consider as administrator or admin admin port or you can say if i would like to do any administration of that particular device i would use this particular ports so my switches and my particular routers if i would like to do any administration task that means if i would like to modify anything with a command line activity admin ports would be there which are admin port console and auxiliary i will tell you what is auxiliary will do and what console can do further we discuss on this external ports correct but yes it is possible that if i look at this particular diagram it looks like an ethernet jack or you can say this is an ethernet port this is also an ethernet port i will use this two type of connections in order to configure this particular router this is the admin ports you can say that's fine then i do have fast ethernet ports over here look at this correct now this fast ethernet port which we have okay this is for you to connect to your switches. I told you that your switch is connected from uplink port to the router. Similarly, on the router, we do have a fast ethernet port. We can consider those port as a LAN port. What we can comes, we can comes under, these two ports comes under LAN port, correct? now this lan port would be connected to the switches okay so i will take the wire from this particular fast ethernet okay and i will connect it to the uplink of your particular switch i can do that correct okay. this is also an ethernet port that means simple rj45 cable rj45 connector with our cat5 cat6 cables which we have discussed in media that same type of cable which i can use it correct and they said it is a fast ethernet port now there are three type of ports are available in lan side in lan port one is called as ethernet if it is a ethernet port the speed of that ethernet port is 10 mbps if it is a fast ethernet port it is 100 mbps okay if it is giga gig or sometime it said say giga ethernet it is obviously 1000 mbps so you can see there are three type of ports are available now based on your model whether you are receiving any fast ethernet or giga ethernet it's up to your model if you purchase any particular model 
which contain two fast ethernet one giga ethernet that means you will be getting three lan ports correct so remember that this is also very very important to look at this particular routers what and how many type of router ports which is available which is made for lan now this is for admin i will tell you one more limitation for this console port as well when we discuss about console and axillary in detail after that there are one more port is called as van port van port is typically made for what for to connect the internet correct if i would like to connect any particular modem any particular isp based connections on this particular router we do have some van port as well now if you look at this particular diagram you will see there are some serial ports over here okay you can see there are some serial ports now these serial ports is nothing but to connect your van wide area network so in simple meaning if i would like to connect this router to my internet service provider with the help of modem i should connect that modem to this serial port correct now there are two type of serial ports are available one is called as 60 pin okay and you can see there is another serial port called as 26 pin 26 pin is nothing but you can say it is a smart serial if you look at carefully this diagram this is quite big this is a 60 pin serial this is very small which is very smart serial ports actually this is called as 26 pin serial nowadays we are not getting this particular 60 pin serial ports at all because this particular serial port do have some limitations that this particular serial port will not support very high bandwidth connections so majority of cases you will be getting the serial port which is a 26 pin which is a smart serial port which does support multiple type of connections as well as high bandwidth connections as well now you can look at here there are screws this is a modular router any given point of time i want to remove this serial port of 60 pin and i want to add this particular 26 pin i can do that because this is a modular router i will purchase this module from cisco i will unscrew this to remove this module and put that new module over here why because it's a modular switch it's not fixed correct so this is how it looks like correct now this is there are three type of majorly connections are there one is called as admin ports under which we can see the console and auxiliary correct then we do have lan port which i connected to the switches now based on the requirement and based on your particular uh, ethernet sizes we have ethernet fast ethernet and giga ethernet i can connect my switches to my router through uplink and there is a three third type of port is called as van port which is a 60 pin or 26 pin which i can connect to my internet service provider so these are the external ports which we can see on the back of your particular router now i told you that common ports would be between your router and switches console and auxiliary this is common other than fast ethernet here is only two available but in uh, switches there are 24 48 because the switches are typically used to connect multiple computers correct so console and auxiliary it's much more relevant which we require to use it correct this is 
interesting i hope it is clear that what are the different type of ports are available on the type of routers how that devices we are going to manage now let's talk about console and auxiliary correct now i will show you one more diagram over here Uh, I would like to find out the appropriate diagram over here. Okay. Yesterday we talked about rollover cable. Checking. moment let's find out the best picture if it is practically available then i would practically show you but currently we are also doing it online so let me find out the best picture of the photo not there but look at here actually they're talking about catalyst you can look at here the console side okay you can see we we talked about a cable called as console cable which is looks like this one side is uh, rj45 and other side is nothing but our com port correct now this type of connection which we are using for console connectivity correct now console port typically made in order to configure the devices like cisco switches or router for first time it is called as local administration i will tell you what is we are going to talk about it called for local administration okay if i if i purchase any brand new cisco device without any uh, configuration uh, which i just got it from uh, cisco actually and if i don't have any particular connection over it, and i would like to configure it for the first time it is mandatory that I need to take the cable from the computer and connect it to the router for first time configuration. And the point where it is connected, that is a console. I will take one end of that RJ45 connection to the console port, likewise this picture, and another end of that particular cable will go to the computer to the COM port we have a com port available correct so that particular com port which i can use it nowadays com port is not available on the laptops okay remember that com port is you can see it is a nine pin nine db connection now such type of connections is not available in our computers right now correct so we do have another console cable is available look at this picture we do have same console cable is there but look at the other side now it is usb correct interesting correct so in previous routers actually there was no option like this we are supposed to have the console cable like one end would be rj45 connector and other end would be a com port that time com port was available no doubt about it correct but nowadays com port is not available at all 
so we do have an option that we are getting a serial cable like this now okay why i required a console port the reason behind it whenever i purchase any cisco device and if i would like to take the cable from here so i am inside a data center i got a new router so this does not contain any configuration at all i want to configure for the first time so how do i do it take the cable from the console connect it to your laptop now you do have two choices either connect it through the usb if you have because that this is the appropriate option or if you have a com port available on your machine you can do that and you can configure your router switch whatever available because i told you com port is available on the switches also and the router also correct now look at this diagram as well okay look at this console port okay nowadays there is a choice that you are getting mini usb as a console port as well it is not just a rj45 it is also mini usb whatever brand new switches or router which you are purchase they will give you both the choice either you can connect it like this either you can connect it like this with the help of rj45 or if you have mini usb you can use it for mini usb so you can see you need to connect your device to the console port for local administration or you can say for initial configuration or sometime if you lost the password if you forget the password router password that time also for password recovery you required to connect your cisco devices to the console port correct is it clear everyone is clear that is what type of ports are available on cisco routers and switches correct every time if you purchase any different model sometime you will get some surprise from cisco there might be some additional type of connectors are attached i will tell you very interesting thing as well if you look at this diagram carefully every particular every particular cisco router they do have a power button if you look at carefully router do have a power button if you look at the back of it it does contain some power button over here thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today